Hello everyone, this is Marjavi Mohd from Pakistan and you are watching my YouTube channel Insani Ittihad which aims to invoke a little bit of humanity in all of us through awareness and understanding. So as I said that I would make a video um, which is a complimentary video or, or, um, or to explain the concept that I uh, explained in my previous video. Um, so there, there were this uh, conversation in the comment section in regards to, um, you know, marriage and sex and everything, um, you know, in between. So I thought that, you know, I should explain um, at least what, what or how I understand things uh, in regards to this context. So, um... Starting with marriage, like I said in the comment section, it is a holistic uh, sort of a thing. So marriage is not a license uh, for sex or, you know, it, it's not the way to, you know, legalize or, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not that. Marriage has, it, it's an another level of commit, committing yourself to someone. Ideally, ideally, it should be your soulmate, but whoever you marry, um, you are committed to that person. And the, the, the reference that I can give you is that the marriage of uh, Leah and Jacob, although that marriage happened under a, a, um, a deceiving plan, by you know Laban who was the father of Leah and Leah and also Rachel was part of it because Rachel had signs Rachel knew that her father would switch uh, the bride and because the uh, because Leah was eldest and it would have wouldn't have been appropriate to marry off the younger younger daughter in those time while the eldest is is unmarried so um, she spoke to Yaakov and Yaakov said that, okay, I'll give you these signs. And when the marriage ceremony is happening, you show me these signs so that I know that it's you and not Leah. And your father is unable to trick me into marrying your elder sister. Uh, but nevertheless, Rachel gave those signs to Leah, her elder sister. And uh, yeah, so although Yaakov was tricked into marrying Leah, um, the, that marriage in itself had a significance in the eyes of uh, Yaakov. Obviously, he didn't divorce her because there was no such concept. And th that he, 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 uh, he, he slept with Leah, he had sex with her, and he was married. And, I mean, it was, I mean, abortion was not a thing at that time. Neither was, uh, you know, protect, uh, protective sex or whatever. So, in, in the context that, I mean, not just sex, but, you know, if, if you have committed yourself to someone in a marital, you know, setup or marital arrangement, you're committed to that person. And not just sexually committed, but, you know, morally, ethically, you are committed to that person. Because marriage is when, you know, you, I, I usually... Um, Usually in the in the Hollywood movies, when you see those, uh, you know, you know those uh, vows, uh, you know, in sickness and health and whatever. So it shows that it's a commitment to be there for the other person, whoever you are marrying. Ideally, again, ideally, one should pray to Hashem, and yeah, I think when you pray to Hashem and ask Hashem to, because we we never know. Uh, that who is our soulmate is very difficult for and now it's even more difficult because you know as as our intellect grows our sophistication and our intellect is enhanced uh, so is our confusion our our ability to you know uh, our ability to make a make a right decision because there there is so much of awareness, so much of information, so much of sophistication, and then to find that it's even harder to because you know the, the, our it's a or 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 devil or Satan whatever it will make uh, more efforts to you know play with our minds and try to deceive us. So you know knowing 
who is our soulmate becomes even more difficult in in 21st century because we're meeting so many people we have access to so many people um our spirituality is i would not say restricted but it is limited in in a way that our lives are just so consumed with the material aspirations and material commitments that we have surrounded ourselves whether it's work commitments or other commitments and we are just so it's very difficult for us to to be spiritually connected to hashem all the time so meeting our soulmate in in such difficult times can only be possible if we pray to hashem and we truly truly deeply want that sort of relationship that we want to connect to our soulmate or you know that sort of a thing so if if you're married to your soulmate things become more amazing and easier but whoever you marry marriage is a commitment it is it is it is a very um what you can say important social commitment and since uh, and a marriage has been there ever since all the religions um existed even even the in the paganistic uh, you know religions marriage had significance you know how hera the goddess of marriage and fertility used to get offended when her husband and uh, zeus would you know cheat on her or whatever so that sort of a thing that commitment that uh, responsibility which comes with you know marriage is is altogether a next level and that commitment and that responsibility is not just in terms of sexual things that too but you know other other things are also uh, also you know important and one has to commit them themselves to their uh, their spouse in in all sort of i mean it's it's like emotional commitment a financial commitment to each other that you know if ups and downs come we won't leave us uh, leave each other sorry and uh, you know also the if you if one spouse gets sick the other take cares of of their spouse so that the commitment is on another level when it comes to marriage that's why it is stressed that marry your soulmate because then think that commitment won't be seen as a burden we see in 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 the marriage of lia and yakov yakov feels pressured and and um burdened with this responsibility that he has with lia and lia is also irritated despite the fact that yakov is such a said the game and of course they are having you know sexual intimacy that's why she is having you know six seven kids with with yakov on the other hand rahal is is the last woman that you know yakov has children with so i'm not saying that rahal <laughs> rahal and yakov probably didn't have sex no no i'm not saying that it's it's, it's just uh, i will talk about that thing some other time but you know generally marriage is a holistic committing commitment towards another person and not just sexual but emotional financial it's a commitment that socially we will be together as a couple and we will take responsibility of whatever happens in our life whether children whether we have children and how we raise the children uh our you know the, the entire uh, entire interaction of 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 the couple with 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 the society even that's also uh, a commitment that we will face this whole thing this whole life that we will create together and we will be responsible for that so marriage is that sex on the other hand is a way to connect to someone very deeply intimately and very powerful it's it, it's a powerful thing to connect now marriage is one way to connecting with marriage is a multiple ways to connecting with your spouse you are connected with your spouse because uh, your financial needs and your social needs and your responsibilities become one but you know in the sex thing it it is this two people becoming one and not just these two people becoming one but 
they are actually invoking divinity because once a couple has this intimate interaction, this, this sex, only then Hashem will be able to give these uh, this couple children. So th that's not necessarily all the time. Whenever whenever a couple you know gets intimate or has sex, not necessarily they they would result in a pregnancy or they would have children. But this is a way to connect to to your spouse or you know any other human being. In a, in a most divine, deep, and powerful way. Because this is this is like a one-on-one, -on -one, it, it's it has nothing to do with, with financial or anything. Right? Emotional, yes, emotional, physical, and spiritual connection joined together in this uh, sexual, uh, you know, connection of two people. And now, ideally, one should have... Uh, sex with the, their soulmate because that then it will actually it enhances you and you we, we can see how how powerful the connection Rachel has with Israel with with Yaakov even when she dies um, Yaakov wishes to spend more time with Bella who was the concubine or who was the maid, uh, fe uh, female maid servant of, of Rachel because he wanted to feel that, that, that ambience or that closeness with Rachel. Maybe he just wanted to talk about Rachel with her or whatever. So, so the soulmate connection is not just physical or sexual. It, it is a spiritual and soulful connection and and there is there is a difference you you i mean your material needs your sexual needs actually transform into divine um, sort of um, divine yearnings or divine yeah divine yearnings would be divine yearnings it's it's it's, it's like when you're with your soulmate you feel like hashem is present or you are connecting with Hashem uh, more easily. Let's just say that. But if you have a good marriage, you will be able to connect with the society uh, very maturely or very... You know, for example, Leah and Yaakov's marriage would be a good social contract in which both Leah and Rachel would be able to have a good social and materialistic life which is a good life. But with Rachel, it's not just a social and material thing, but it's, it's very spiritual and very soulful. So therefore, the marriage between us, between two soul, between soulmates, is much more, um, much more divine. Let's just say that. The other, other married life is also very divine, but this, this marriage has is on another level, let's just say. And um, one can have sex with, with people um, without a wedlock, because we see, again, the example of Bella and Zelfa with the con concubines. And, I mean, it's, it's not like that Hashem only approves sexual interactions under wedlock, because they also, I mean, Hashem gives us children. So if Hashem gave Bela and Zilpha children with, with Yaakov, that means that sex was approved by Hashem. And even if, even if two people having sex without a bedrock, not having children, does not mean that Hashem d didn't approve of that. Because whatever, I mean, it's, it's a very Hasidic thing to say that, even if a leaf drops from a tree, it will not be able to drop or fall off from the tree if Hashem would not approve it. So everything happens around us. The sun comes out, the, the, the rain, the this. Everything is divine providence and is, is because Hashem allows it 
to happen. And sometimes Hashem also allows bad things to happen. And then you say, how can Hashem want bad things to happen? And then the answer is free will. We chose this. We, we, ate, the, uh, the, we ate from the tree of knowledge. We ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge to give us this free choice. And if a person decides, for example, to hurt somebody, and if a person who decides to be good, just like the person who decides to be good have full rights to materialize his actions into righteousness and into goodness, so does the person who makes the wrong choice, choices or bad choices or evil choices has the right to exercise or materialize or have actions. Of course, both the actions, good or bad, has consequences and repercussions. Those repercussions and consequences have to be faced by us. And um, yeah, that, that, that is the concept. So if, if a person wants to have um, sex outside wedlock and, you know, if one is already married, that means one is cheating his spouse. So there will be circumstances and consequences of that. Or if somebody is unmarried and the other person is also unmarried and they just want to have casual sex and they, they, they don't necessarily want children out of it. They just, it's their choice. It's, it's the free will. Their actions would definitely have consequences. They might have, one of them or both of them might have, you know, sexual diseases, emotional baggage from, you know, getting so intimately close to each other and then parting ways. I mean, it, it depends. It depends. But a person has the choice to, has the right and the freedom to make a choice that whatever kind of sex that I want, I mean, people abuse children. If, if it's like, if you ask me, or if, if God would not allow such a thing. But then again, we have eaten the, the, the fruit from the tree of knowledge. We have put upon us this curse that we have this free choice. We will use our intellect. We will use our mind. And we try to be good. And we would transform the bad into good. Transforming evil. And the job of the Jewish people is to transforming the evil into good. That, that, that curse that we took upon ourselves by eating from the tree of knowledge gives us this opportunity to either be good or either be good and have this responsibility to transform evil or bad things into good. So that Hashem, it's like transforming or, or a sort of kashering the tree of knowledge or kashering the knowledge Specifically, now we talk about knowledge economy and IT and this and knowledge is, is, is the commodity that all the communities and all the countries want to have. This is, a, this is the 21st century's resource, the biggest resource any country, any economy can have is knowledge. And the Jewish people have this responsibility to kashering or koshering the, the knowledge Economy that this knowledge shouldn't be used for evil, you know, aspirations or evil purposes, but rather for good or for the goodness of humanity or goodness of, of society and, and, and humans and, and not just humans, but, you know, the ecosystem, the universe, in fact, we shouldn't be, you know, thinking absurd things. So that's the whole point. And sex is, is a very, very powerful and significant and divine way to connect with um, with another human beings uh, to with uh, with another human being so therefore we must give it a lot of thought and a lot of consideration that who we want to make this very important and significant connection with we cannot just randomly have sex with every other person because that that would be an insult of this this beautiful and powerful and amazing uh, you know way to connect to people and it also is an insult to ourselves and to other people that we just do not consider or do not even think and just 
sleep with people or have sex with them. And sometimes people, you know, in, in the Islamic theology, get to man have a nikah and start, nikah is like a lesson to fuck. I mean, this is, I'm so sorry to use such a language, but it, it is absurd. It's absurd. And then um, majority of, of the scholar, Islamic scholars have said, sex is a need. No, 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 sex is not a need. Humans have this need of social interaction. We need other human beings to live our life more productively and with more, much more, you know, sensitivity and and respond. We, we need other humans, not necessarily for sex, sexual purposes, but we need other people. You know, see, the reason Hashem created Chava was that Adam was alone. He was feeling alone, not because he was feeling sexually frustrated or wanted somebody to have sex with. Adam was feeling alone and quiet and lost. He needed a companion. So we need, we, we are social, like we say, we are social animals. So we are actually social people. We need other people to bring out our goodness and even our even our evilness but inherently we are social we we feel and we don't want to feel alone so that's our basic need we do not want to be alone and ideally we should every adam should be with his hava his soulmate so uh yeah that that is the point that i wanted to clear and uh, yeah i i hope um I hope it's it's um, it makes things clear. Sex inherently is not bad. Our attitude towards sex and how we we use this ability to connect with other people makes it wrong wrong or right. If we use this ability to abuse young children who do not know or do not actually want this sort of connection and yet we impose this on them because we want it that's not fair it, it's it's a two people's thing okay so the other person has to also acknowledge and know the importance of this connection that if i am having sex with someone he or she okay he Okay, I, I'm not judging those the homosexual uh, relationship. I mean, I, I because I can't understand it, so I'm so sorry. I, I can't say it's a bad thing. It's a, okay, I can say it's a bad thing in, in my own person. I would not like to have a homosexual relationship necessarily. I'm, I, 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 if I want to have, if I want to connect with someone, ideally my soulmate and my husband, in, in this sexual way, I want that he also should know the importance of it and should be able to want it. And it's a mutual thing. We both want it and we both know that the, the significance of this powerful con connection and we know its, 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 um, its significance, its, its responsibility, its sensitivity around this whole connection and are able to acknowledge each other's um, aspirations yeah aspirations and each other's um, what is that vulnerabilities associated with this sort of you know uh, connection uh, so i hope um, all of us have healthy sexual connections with whomever we feel like and and it's a mutual thing and i hope that we have you know divine and wonderful marital uh, relationships ideally again with our soulmates and i wish that everyone should find their soulmate and me too very, very soon so yeah i do miss my soulmate so i wish that's my wish and it's eid time it's the second day of eid wishing you or wishing you this great wish to everyone all jew or gentile irrespective lee I hope everyone finds their soulmate, have wonderful, uh, meaningful relationships, meaningful sexual relationships and marital relationships, and just have uh, simcha and divinity 
uh, around your homes and have you know my rabbi said uh, this wonderful concept that I've come across is such a beautiful one. it's shalom bayat so I hope every home is a shalom bayat and even if you have even couples have argument with each other they think of this shalom bayat and say okay fine I agree with you just not, let's just not <laughs> argument um, have happy lives everyone and be grateful to Hashem and yeah Eid Mubar to whoever is celebrating enjoy the holidays if you're having or whatever have fun thank you I hope you like the video